When I speak, you probably hear things you never heard before in your life. I'm a revelator of heaven. That is actually a commission given to me in person by Jesus Christ. You don't say no to Jesus, especially in person, okay? <laughs> and so if you wonder, why do I know all these things? Where did this come from? It's revelation from the Father. You can sit down or you'll still be standing an hour from now. And I want to tell you that when Christ came to my home, uh, which was kind of totally unexpected, uh, I think it was back in 89, something like that, and, um, and actually told me what, what they had decided, he and the father had decided about my life. And they had been training me for three years without telling me what I was being trained for. They did make sure I no longer had my job, wasn't that kind of them. Literally, literally, I was working in law offices as a secretary. That's good money, in case you didn't know. It was good money. And I was working for a Christian lawyer out of a, out of a team of about 80 lawyers. And uh, he was also a comedian person. And he did all the business law. He did real estate law. He did estate uh, planning law and taught me all of it. I didn't know any of it. Uh, the reason he hired me was because he knew I had favor with God. When I came for my interview, he said, you're hired. He said, I see God all over you. And he was a Christian, too, on top of all the rest of the things in his life. So some of the law other lawyers liked him. Some didn't, but he didn't care. He had a God that loved him. His whole family was Christians. He had a great relationship with his wife. Uh, he never missed a kid's birthday. He'd go to it all the time. And uh, I, I only typed 40 words a minute for you who know what that is, nothing. If you ever had a fast typing test, you would not even be considered at 40 words a minute. But I took shorthand at 125 words a minute, which he wanted. And so I also have a photographic memory, so I wouldn't never forget anything. And I am a seer in the spirit realm, which kind of uh, was exciting for him. He didn't really know any seers, and that makes your life completely different. I've never met, met a seer, I can tell you. You see everything, there's levels. Either you see everything all at the same time, or you see sporadically, or you see when God has something for you to see. My eyes are open all the time, and have been since I was a very little girl. I remember being a year old, or less than a year old, in the, in the little bassinet. I remember seeing my angels around me. I remember laying in the hand of God before I ever came to earth, and he telling me things. So I have a photographic memory. And that also comes in very handy when you're a seer, when God gives you assignments and you have to remember things that he tells you. And so I never got to choose my assignments. I never, I never really asked for what he was giving me. It was my obedience to him and also my family history. I'm like seventh generation, a believer, real believer. I actually believe him. And my father was, my grandmother was, all the way down our family line. I just happened to fall in that family line. And out of 15 children, I was chosen out of them to do this. I would not ever be the person who had pink hair. Do you like the pink hair? Yeah. So does heaven. If you don't like it, then get used to it because the rainbow lives there. It's alive. And sometimes it shows up in your hair, in your clothes. Your clothes change color sometimes. Uh, your mansion changes color sometimes. It's just color is everywhere because it comes from God. They ask me to have pink hair, which is quite a shock to some pastors. <laughs> some liked it. Some didn't want it. Some said, you're going too far. I said, no, I just live in heaven culture. That's all. And you'll find out when you get there, so it's okay. And so I have had many, many, many encounters, over a thousand trips to heaven. I didn't take, I didn't ask for any of them. The Lord told me you'll be caught up whenever we need you to see something or explain something or we'll take you to the past and show you things and give you revelation on it. We'll show you the word of God, give you revelation on it. We'll take you into the future and give you revelation on it. So they did tell me what I would be doing, which was kind of him. And uh, he said, this is one thing he said to me, some people are going to love everything you say. Some will go, well, that's nice. Some will think, well, I guess it's all right. Some will say, I don't believe any of it, and some will want to kill you. But we won't let them. So if the Lord of glory tells you we won't let them kill you, you have no, contr you have no fear of any of that, right? I'm in their hands. What they want is what they get. And everyone should feel that way. 
somebody tells you something, it's because it's something they really need. I know you think they have no needs. Yes, they do. They have need us to act like believers. They need us to represent who they are. They need us to speak the truth to people. Amen? So don't think you're not needed. You are needed. You're part of the body. If you've been born again, we are all family. Say, we are all family. We'll all live together one day and all through eternity. We're going to be great friends. You are invited to my mansion without asking. We will have quite a time. Amen. So now you gave permission. People think, this is, I never thought any of this was, what is this you're talking about? I thought I had my nice little cabin in the hill somewhere and nobody would ever bother me again. Forget it. You do get alone time if you really, if you really want it. But most people love to be together. There's so many events in heaven. It is not boring. The worship is beyond anything you've ever experienced. Most of the time, you're caught up off the floor in the throne room when you're worship. You're caught up into the glory. You're caught up into different places. I mean, so much could happen when you're worshiping. And even heaven itself, the world, say the world, called heaven, is God's home. We're invited to live with him until he makes the new earth. Then we're all moving. That pretty much, in general, is your life future right there. 50% of heaven is all glory, all fire, all wonder, all splendor. It's, the, the, it's the, the wonder of the throne room. The love that comes in waves from the Father, from the Son, from Holy Spirit. Heaven is like alive. It's alive. The waves of love are alive. The colors are alive. Everything is alive. The trees sing. The rocks talk to you. There's nowhere you go where there isn't life. So it's not boring. It's worth everything you give to go there. Because you'll never be the same. And your family members are not crying. They're not mad about how they died. They're not holding it against anybody. They're not angry at you anymore. If they were when they left, they forgot about it the moment they stepped out of the, your, their body. They're rooting you on, cheering you on, praying for you, writing lists of places to take you when you get there. They're buying gifts, not buying the Holy Spirit corrected me. No buying. Nothing costs anything. It's free. Getting gifts for everybody. So when you get home to heaven, besides the throne room, welcome by the Father and the Son. And then you celebrate for however God's going to keep you there. Or you stay there because Sean Bach was there for a very long time. He didn't want to leave the throne room. He just wanted to keep worshiping. And I think his wife was already there. And she let him just take as long as he wanted. It didn't matter. You know, finally, she came and got him. <laughs> but it's just a different life. It is called heaven culture. So God doesn't necessarily want to change all the culture in the earth. He wants to introduce heaven culture as a new way of life. Heaven culture invading this world is better than trying to change the rest of the cultures. You may have some success, maybe not a lot of success, but people who understand heaven culture and that way of life run after it. So heaven is 50% glory, splendor, wonder, the love of God, all of his plans he has for you. The mysteries you always wondered about, you've learned so much when you get to heaven. The other half of heaven is fun. Say fun. I'm his son and daughter coming home to him and fun. Amen. There you go. And so when God asked me to do all this, he said, don't worry about money. That was the first thing he said. I know you're leaving your job. And then he got my husband released from his job. So neither one of us had a job. Isn't that wonderful? And then he took us through a season where we didn't have anything at all. And we forgave the people who did it, but they, they, they corrupted and messed up all our finances. We had great finances. And, uh, and yet we trusted God, believed God. We slept on people's floors. We still loved people. Uh, I wasn't in the speaking ministry yet at that time, but I was in charge at uh, our church of hospitality. I did a lot at the church that I went to, and I still did it. I still went. I still did it. We still gave to people. We still helped people. It didn't change anything in our life. We knew God had a plan. 
So for like a whole year, we went through all of this, still believing him, still trusting him for what he had said to us. And at the end of the year, a friend who I knew very little about came up and handed me the keys to her million-dollar condo in Ponte Vedra Beach and said, here, you live here for free for a year. So that's God taking care of you. It didn't cost me anything. But I gave whatever he wanted me to give. I did whatever he wanted to give. I never stepped back. I never stopped praying. I never stopped worshiping. I never stopped attending the church that I was part of. I was still very faithful of that. So it didn't change who I was. So if you're in that season right now, don't worry. It's going to get so great for you, you won't even hardly believe it. Because God's got the money train leaving heaven right now. Get ready to receive from that. Remember, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for what? The just and the, the righteous, right? He is serious about that. There will be a time on the earth when the body of Christ will have more money than the wicked in the world. You should clap louder than that. <laughs> So all the wicked who are spending their money on wicked things to try to take this world are going to lose it. Justice is coming in such great amounts never given before on the earth. The landslide of fraud exposure is about to happen in this world. And no one's going to stop God from doing it. They do not have more power than he does. They do not have more wisdom than he does. They don't have life like he has it. And he already has plans, and they're not taking his plans away. He's allowing them to expose themselves. Because he does not want that same evil hiding for another four years, eight years, and then coming up into when the glory and the fire is happening. Because what is coming next is powerful. It's God. It's what he wants. It's what he always had planned. The manifested sons and daughters walking on this earth, speaking to the land, the sea, and the air. The earth is crying out, not because the end is coming. It's crying us for us to stand up and do what God gave us to do. So I will let you know, I, I have never, ever stopped giving. Giving is like my hobby. I love it. I give money away everywhere I go. When I go through a drive through they're getting a $100 tip. You think that rocks them? I told them God wanted to bless them. They'll probably think about that for a very long time. So I've never stopped giving. I've never stopped helping. I help people pay for things. Like you're not going to lose your house. You're not going to lose your car. Because at one time we lost everything. We know what that feels like. I have never stopped giving, never stopped helping. Money to me is for help. It's for help. It's for helping people. It's for giving to God, helping people with plans they have with God, helping to build, build, build the kingdom. I am all about the kingdom of God coming to this earth, rising up on this earth, and we are all members of that kingdom. So that shows you right there he had a plan. There's so many things that haven't happened yet that is going to happen and still has to happen. So stop planning to be, re- to be raptured in the next six weeks. The next six years, the next 60 years, forget it. You'll be waiting around, maybe hiding in the mountains somewhere, doing something else, and here is the kingdom of heaven being built all over this earth. He's taking whole states and cities and turning them into regions of light. It will not be the same. It'll never be the same. And whether you like it or not, Trump is still getting his four years that was stolen from him. Woohoo! Woohoo! Our president. He actually still is. And God has adamantly, adamantly told me since before 2016 that he would be president for eight years. And he meant it. And all this junk and garbage and trash of the enemy that's going on isn't changing that. And it doesn't have to happen in the normal way. God doesn't do normal things. 
He does his thing. And he said to me, the only way Trump will not be president again is if he doesn't want to do it. Do you think he still wants to do it? And so do I, because he knows it was stolen. In 2020, when that election took place, and they had said, well, we got to close down. There's too many votes. We don't have time to count and remember that lie. And I'm sitting, the father's right there with me, and I'm watching it. And, um, and the father said, no, they just stole it. They're going to hide votes, burn votes, throw them in the river. They're going to send them, they'll bury them, some of them, and they will kill people to stop them from telling the truth about it. They're going to hide it. They want to take it. Satan's trying to take over right now. And you will find out that they will say Trump lost, although the other person almost got no votes. They were manufactured votes, stolen votes, fake votes. And I don't mind saying it because, you know, what? I was sent to tell the truth. So if you want to know the truth, that is the truth. I love people. I want them all to go to heaven. They can choose to go to hell themselves if they want to. I plan to go to heaven. I've been to heaven and hell. You don't want hell. Nobody wants it. Heaven is your home. You lived inside the Father as a little spirit of life. I can show you that in the Word of God. When Adam's body was done and finished, the Father went where he wanted to have him. He spoke, the Word stepped out, that would be Jesus Christ, and made Adam. But he had no life in him whatsoever. The Father, and you will read it, the Father leans over and breathes into Adam's nostrils his Spirit of life, that was his spirit, little person, in there, in Adam's body, and he became a living soul. Say that loud. Soul. Your soul, although almost not known anything about, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Your soul is like the engine that runs you. It is a spiritual thing. They can't look inside of you and see your soul. I've seen your soul. I've seen a human soul. I've seen a living soul. The soul itself. I know how it's made. I know it's how it's designed. I know how it operates. You need to know how it operates. It stores information. You actually have levels and layers in you that stores all information. One time I had been, someone had said, I want to come to your church. I want you to, to speak for me. And he handed a little scrap of paper to me at a meeting. And later I was thinking about it. I couldn't find the scrap of paper. And so I said to the Holy Spirit, Where's my scrap of paper? I cannot remember the number or the name of the person. I, I want to call him and let him know I want to come. And he said, okay, hold on. And in about two seconds, out of my being came that little piece of paper. It flipped around, landed on my desk, and the Holy Spirit said, write it down right now. I wrote it all down. It goes up, flips around, and goes right back in me. Everybody has that happen to you. That's why you remember things. Something is good. Something is not so good. What you watch with your eyes goes in that file. What you read in your books or papers or whatever it is goes in that file. What you listen to on TV goes in that file. What you say yourself goes in that file. Guard your heart, that's your soul. For out of it will flow the issues of life, your life will be happening according to what you have in your soul. You become what you have in your soul. It's right in the middle of your spirit. So you are a living soul. You're a human being. You have flesh on your body. You are a spiritual being. You have your spirit, and inside there is your soul. Your soul has a mind. It has a will, which is this column that looks like so solid. It can't be moved. It can't be changed unless you allow it to be changed. And then it goes into your emotions. In you are layers of you. How about that? The Holy Spirit says unlimited layers. You have layers of you. And Joan was talking about how she was taken somewhere and brought back. You know that? That's happened to me a few times. A layer of my soul was taken. And I went to a foreign country and spoke in their language. When I was done, I came back, and my layer went back inside of me. Those layers can be corrupted, okay? They can be wounded. They can be hurt. They can be blessed. They can become very powerful in God. It's up to you how you guard your heart or your soul. 
It's very special to speak life to your children, to train them to know God, to understand him, to want to desire him, to know Jesus Christ, to know who he is and understand him, get them filled with the Holy Spirit. You need those things in you to be everything God wants you to be. On the day that you get born again, they are there. All three are right there. Jesus takes a part of the anointing he walked in and he puts it in you. 1 John 2, 27, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, he puts a deposit of the anointing in you, and it lives in you. It doesn't live and leave. You release it into people, into places, into things. The more you release, it grows till eventually that would become a cloud outside of you. Peter did it. When he walked past people, that cloud engaged them. It wasn't his shadow. It wasn't any natural shadow. It was what was living in him came, and he walked past them. They'd be raised from the dead. They'd be raised and healed. Demons would flee out of them. Out of them. You have that anointing if you're a born-again believer. It's not like you're anointed to sing. You're anointed to, to dance. You know, those things are different individual anointings. That will, he will never take away from you. That's a gift. And you use that gift in heaven when you get there whether it's being a baker, a gardener, a forest person, whatever it is, you do all that in heaven to bless everybody. So you won't lose that. I mean, a great pianist, whatever it is, you won't lose that gift, even if it's only when you get to heaven you actually use it. But the anointing in 1 John 2, 27 is for every single believer. The more you use it and release it, the more you get back. That's why it's a deposit. The more you use it, the more you get back. And that creates glory for God. So start releasing the anointing everywhere you go. Stand up. We're going to stir it up. Stand up. I'm going to stir it up in you. Raise your hands. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, at your birth with Christ, giving yourself to him, he gave you a deposit of the anointing. And it lives in you. So hold up your hands. I'm about to stir it up. Father, right now I ask you to sweep across this audience. Stir up that anointing in everybody here. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Set them on fire to begin to release that anointing. Let it grow and grow and grow until they become blessed by God. They'll walk past people. They'll get healed. They'll be raised from the dead. They will no longer be sick. He showed me one person releasing the anointing, walking through a hospital, and everyone in the hospital was healed. Release it in your family's homes. They don't even have to know you did it. Lay on your kids' bed, your grandkids' bed, release the anointing in it. They'll begin to be consumed by it. It is a weapon and a blessing from God. Okay, everybody turn to someone else next to you and lay hands on them and say, I release the anointing. Uh, the Most High God and Jesus Christ into your body. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Woohoo! Woohoo! Amen. Sit down. I'm determined. And, and God is determined to give you as much as I can give you while I'm up here. <laughs> so now you've been trained in something you have always had. I didn't give you that anointing. I stored it up. It's been living in you since you got born again. I got born again at age four. I've told people that before. Every now and then around a teenager, maybe, I thought, maybe, I don't know, is this really easy, is this not easy? And Jesus came and squashed that thought. So most of my life, I really have served God wholeheartedly and spoken for him in spirit and truth. Now, I did that before I had this commission in the 80s. But when Jesus came and said, this is a commission, we won't take your gift away. I am a photographer. And, I, and it was a gift, so I had no training and didn't need it. I take some of the most amazing photographs. They are capturing moments in time. That's how I see it. You need to capture moments in time. You need things to remind you of things in your life. 
it's okay. And so that's where we'll be when we go to heaven. Guess what I'll do? Come by, I'll take your pictures for free. <laughs> I will still be a photographer. That is my passion, my love. You have me lay it down. The only thing I take pictures for now are the host of heaven. That would be heaven's army. And I have hundreds of those. One time I'll come and we'll, we'll have to do a, um, a training on a uh, host ID and teach you all about having an army to command for God, part of our, heaven's army. The host of heaven, just so you know, they were never created to defend heaven. God made them to help defend us. They were sent to protect and keep us in all of our ways. And then eventually there was a scroll opened in heaven that was a, um, a host command for the host to begin to be commanded by us. You need to know that Jesus Christ said before the Sanhedrin court, if I wanted to, you're standing here as, as a man in the Son of God. I could call the army of heaven to come and defend me completely. So he had that right. Even walking as a man, he had the right to call the army of heaven. You as a born-again believer have that right. But you can't be sinning and think they're going to listen to you. They know what your life is like. They will not do anything for anyone if you're, if you're trying to play in the enemy's camp and play in God's camp. That is not a wise thing to do. Amen? So that's enough about that. So anyway, you now have had the anointing stirred up. You are now, you are now asked by God to release an anointing every day of your life somewhere. If you send a text, put your hand on the phone. When you've got that text ready, you say, I release the anointing, and then you send it. When they open the text, they will be consumed by the anointing. When you send an email and you have it ready, lay your hand and release the anointing. It will stir, it'll be in that email, and every time they read it, they're going to get more of it. You understand? Before you make a phone call, get the number up on there and say, release the anointing. When they say hello and you say the first word, the anointing flows into them. It is something you can do every day of your life, everywhere you go. It will drive heaven, heaven uh, into joy and celebration, it'll drive hell nuts. Because it's yours, it was given to you, they can't stop you from using it. It's your, your decision now, but God has made you aware of that. So now it's your responsibility to release that anointing. Amen? Amen. So that's something else you've got while you were here. And I, I, I know I'm supposed to be taking up the offering, but I, I always forget about that. So we're going to stop and take it up, okay? <laughs> I, I'm a huge believer in giving especially to places who actually use their life for God, to help people, to love people, to help God with what he wants done, and to help promote what he wants done. And so what you will actually be doing is helping to support revelation of heaven being given all over this world. So I think they, they're going to put something up somewhere for you to see in just a minute, I guess. <laughs> If you want to, I think if you want to text it, if you want to write checks, some people still have checks. There you go. There's the ways to give it, give it right there. And I promise you, Joan will make sure that it comes to me. I've known her a long time, so that's the way to give, the different ways to give. And I can tell you right now that you can never outgive God. That is one thing I have known all of my life. My dad knew that. My grandmother who became a missionary in the jungles of Panama knew that. And my dad was a lay minister. He loved people. He loved his enemies. My brothers wanted to shoot them, but my dad loved them. So they either became his friend or they moved away because they couldn't stand all the love. He'd pray for them. Sometimes he'd rescue them. We rescued kids in the drug flop houses in the 60s. Uh, we rescued all kinds of people, alcoholics and everything like that. And my dad would bring them by their house. We'd feed them. We'd help them get jobs. We'd help them. They would get born again. So we were in ministry all of our lives, even when we were still children. We saw our dad do that. So that is normal for us to care about the souls because your soul is very special. You're wonderfully and perfectly made by God. What you let get in that soul either makes it glorious, powerful, or you're giving away part of your soul to hell, and you don't want to do that. I know they talked last night about breaking soul ties, so I won't go over that. That's very important to do that, though. If you made a soul tie with somebody and they're corrupted or they've abused you, God didn't never tell you to live with someone who was beating you up. 
Say amen, please. Because I remember for years the church would say, oh, you've got to stay with them anyway. Oh, no. If you beat up, and that can be on either side. If the husband beats up the wife, the wife beats up the husband. I've seen that happen too. God didn't say that's why you were married. You're supposed to represent Christ, right? A husband and wife represent one. They're one. You're supposed to love. You're supposed to love your wife like Christ loved the church, and he died for it, for your information. We are supposed to honor our husbands and let them know how important us. We are the weaker vessel. I don't mind saying that to my husband. There's my man right over there on that thing. Wearing his American uh, flag t-shirt, his shirt. His shirt. So I, I honor him. We've been married over 40 years. I don't want anybody else. Usually when you go look for someone else, if they're not, it's worse than it was with the one you had. Now, I'm not saying, but I just have to set you free. If you are, you were not supposed to stay and be beaten. That is not God. He's totally against it. Amen? So if you ever thought, no, I can't, and somebody, you went to some pastor, nope, you've got to stay with them even if they're beating you. Pray they don't kill you. No, the Bible doesn't say that. So I always teach the truth, okay? You find somebody, not someone you can just live with. Find someone you can't live without because they love Jesus Christ so much. Amen? So that was for free. Somebody needed to hear that. Amen? So I thank you for those who give. God, I'm praying over these offerings that were given even during this entire meeting, God. I ask you to give them a hundredfold return. And some now in this season, a thousandfold return, God, because you're giving that money out. That the body of Christ, the just and the righteous, will get the money from the wicked. They'll lose their money, their lands, their businesses, their jobs, whatever they've got. If they've been sowing their self into Satan. Seed time and harvest is coming. That means what you've seeded the last several years, you're receiving a harvest. And that harvest won't be stopped. So if you've been giving, if you've been helping, if you've been loving, even during these days are going on, get ready for a tremendous blessing in your life. Amen? So, Father, I bless the offering. I bless everybody here. I thank you, God, for bringing them up into new levels of the finances, opening doors for them that were never opened before, that only you can open, God. I thank you for doing that, bringing restoration in their families' lives, in their lives. I bless their health to be healthy, to be, to be well and wholesome in Jesus' name. Receive that, too, in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for their souls to be restored. They're not carrying anything more, any cares, any concerns. We cast them upon you because you care for us. I thank you for all this to be done in Jesus' name. I do, I do short offerings. Say amen. amen. Okay, so you can go ahead and take the offering out. I'll keep talking. Is that okay? So after having gone to, been caught up to heaven over a thousand times, I am consumed by it. And being a seer, I see whatever is with people, whether it's angels or the other. And sometimes I pray over them. If they walk by, I will cancel that assignment of Satan. I'll cast him out of them. <laughs> we have been given the right to cast out devils. Is that right? Yeah. Jesus said to give you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Say all, all. the power, power of the enemy. Yeah. We are over it. Yeah. We have the right yeah. to cast out demons, yeah. to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And nothing by any means, any means, shall harm us. So right now, anyone in this room that is being consumed, abused, used by Satan, we say to that enemy, get out in Jesus' name. You have no right here. Set them free, Set them free. And, leave. and leave. Amen. Amen. Woo! <laughs> Do you all know I love the shofar? In heaven, they actually have concerts with shofars. And when they blow them, the, the rainbow, that rainbow that goes around the Father, comes out of, shoots out of all of them. 
it shoots out. Sometimes it's glory clouds. Sometimes it's just the, 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 the breath of God that is, comes out of those shofars. So when you, when you hear one being blown, it's a very powerful thing in the spirit. You are a spiritual being. You were a spirit before you were anything else. You were still you. You were still you. You didn't look like that. You looked like a little spirit, like a little child thing. And you had a little kind of shift thing on with little kind of pants. And you swam in the river of life inside the Father. It flows out of the Father, goes around the throne, all the way down through the middle, unless he closes the floor because he needs it for something else, that crystal sea, that crystal floor. And then it goes outside the throne room and goes all over through heaven. It's a glorious thing to see. It is glorious. The throne room is alive. It can grow as big as it needs to hold everyone in heaven if it has to. People sometimes don't want to leave there. They want to be with Jesus Christ. They want to be with the Father. And all the way up the four sets of steps, the throne is in the middle of the throne room. It's not on the back wall. God had the best plan. Four sets of steps, the front, the sides, the back. And on these steps, they could be anywhere from 12 foot to 50 foot wide, depending on how big he wants it. He's high and lifted up. He glows with the glory. He just glows everywhere. His hair is white. His eyes are flames of fire. That rainbow, that bow, comes in and out of him and goes like the northern lights. It waves like that. Sometimes you are consumed, so consumed that you just lay on your face. You don't care if you ever get up. Sometimes you're caught up in the throne room. Sometimes he catches you up and takes you somewhere, like back in time, like he did Moses. He told Moses, I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. And when I pass by, I'll show you the hinder parts. He meant the times of time, the times of time, the back part of time, I will show it to you. The things that have been, I will show that to you. That's what he was saying. That's how Moses knew about the earth being made, right? He knew about the heavens and the earth being made. He knew about the seven, first seven days. He knew all of that. How did he know that? He knew about Adam and Eve. He knew about that. Because when he took him into the backward parts of time and walked with him to that place, Moses saw all of it. Sometimes he does that with you. He has done that with me because I'm a revelator and my whole life is to reveal heaven to earth. And I can just tell you this. He meant it when he said the wealth of the wicked was going to go to the just and the righteous. He meant that. He wants the kingdom to be built. He wants people to, be, to, to have help. He has many projects he's planning, new inventions that are coming forth to help change your life like you've never had it changed before. He's not willing to give it to the evil, so that's why he hasn't done it right now. But that is also about to change. When all the corruption and all the wicked and all the evil who either belong to Satan or give themselves to Satan, I'm talking about flesh people, they will, they will lose it all. They're just going to lose everything. Okay, the uh, fake TV will probably not be around very long because God is going to make, what God is going to cause to happen is people will run after him because he is going to erase the gray area that says there is no God. Amen. So many wonderful things are about to happen. He is not going to throw America into the sea and forget about it. America was made as a gift from God. He calls America his gift because it takes two-thirds of the gospel around the world. It makes it possible to live for Christ fully if you want to. So all this stuff about shutting things down and stopping things, forget about that happening. Amen? The, the church is right now actually being judged by God who wants to stand with him, who wants to blend themselves with the evil and thinks it's okay to worship other gods in their church at the same time. They probably will lose that church. And God will put it in the hands of somebody who will run it the way it's supposed to. Amen? So these are powerful days of glory, the days of the glory and the fire, spreading over this world for several generations. 
I've seen his timeline in heaven embedded in the floor. It doesn't have like years. It has events that will take place. And all I could see was way down the line, a lot of events that had to take place. So he's not willing to give those up. Do you think he has to surrender to Satan? No. Say no. no. Our, God Our God is stronger, is stronger. More, filled with life, more filled with life, has all the money and wealth, the money and wealth than the devil will ever have. The devil, the devil is, a is a doormat and a loser. And a loser. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Amen. I love it that Joan was talking about her television station. That's going to happen everywhere. There will be new television stations, new networks that will spring forth in these days coming on the earth. The government will change. The government is going to change. God is even over the government. He has me continually send the host there to pull down strongholds, to shred platforms of evil, ruling over all that, to expose everything that they think has never been exposed, was going to be exposed. I spend a lot of time doing that. And they're very good at doing it. So these are days of joy, of hope, celebration. Eat cake and celebrate. Maybe eat a little less of it. I loved it when the Holy Spirit told me to say that, and I started saying it, and people got real happy. He's not up there with a big club ready to beat you. You are his son or his daughter. He wants the best for you. He wants you to live and stop just existing. He brings us life and life more abundantly. Say, Father, we ask for grace, for abundant life, this day, we receive it from you and your son, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm just watching that clock ticking by. There are no clocks in heaven, people. There's no clocks anywhere. <laughs> It's the most beautiful, amazing place. There are no handicapped people there. Nobody wears glasses at all, ever. You are young. No one is old. There are no old people there. They're young. And most of the time, you don't look 33. You look like you're in your 20s. When you can't really tell, you know how old you are? And you learn how to do all kinds of things if you haven't already learned it down here. There'll be a time when we do fly in heaven. There's going to be a time, I don't know, maybe when you ar ar arise there. Um, but I can tell you there's many things you'll do in heaven you could never do on this earth. Love one another is the most important thing I could say to you. It's like, you know, when uh, John was fixing to go home to heaven and they dragged him out on his litter so he could speak to them. Love one another. That was his message. The most important thing we can do is show the world we love and care about one another. Amen? Especially those who are the household of God. If you have a great pastor who's, who's really revealed God to you, Jesus to you, please pray for him and please bless them. I, 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 I love the, the pastor that I still call my pastor, although I travel so much sometimes. I'm home sometimes one day a week, maybe two days a week. I've taken a little break because we had to move all of our offices. We had to move our home. and But I'll start speaking again this next year. I'll be doing a lot more stuff. But thank you for your prayers. I really sincerely mean that. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all of your blessings. How many people here are members of the Guardian Zone? Can I see your hands? I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for an overabundance of finances. I thank you, God, that I remind you that they have given to support heaven's plan on this earth in Jesus' name. If you want to know about that, go to catcur.com, go to revealingheaven.com. Those are our two websites that we have. Um, one of them has a photo gallery. I think that's in catcur.com. But I just want you to know I'm here to reveal heaven to earth, and I'll do it until he takes me home. Amen. Amen. 
I, I will at one time answer questions, and I know everybody has questions about heaven, against, again, especially children. How many children are here? Can you raise your hands? Can I see how many of you? God has a special place in his heart for you. He has plans for you even now as a young person. Your future will be one of the greatest futures in this earth. You'll be some of the first to move the mountains into the sea. You'll be some of the first that will walk upon, probably even walk in the air at one point, maybe on the water too, but also in the air. I can tell you that God says, when Jesus said you'll do the same things I did and even greater things, well, he walked on the water. I've walked on air. I'm an air walker. And I didn't ask for that either. He gave it to me. <laughs> I fell one time, and I shouted out of my spirit, I will never fall again. And ever since then, I have been, angels have caught me up. They have stopped me from falling. And one time I went to speak somewhere. I think it was in Reno. Yes, I speak there because God has taken Las Vegas. It will be the city of his son, not the city of sin. But he wants me to go back and talk about the children. You have so many places to have fun in heaven. If you have siblings in heaven, they are rocking their life, I can tell you. They're having so much fun. They know who you are. Even if you were born after they had gone to heaven, they pray for you. They bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will get to see with them and spend time with them in heaven. They'll have places to take you to have fun because God wants to reunite families in heaven. Your siblings have not forgotten you. Your parents have not forgotten you. Your fathers, your grandfathers, your aunts, your uncles, they have not forgotten you if they live in heaven. They love you more now than they did when they were on the earth. Amen? All of your pets go to heaven. I can't leave without telling you that. Yes, there's proof in the word of God, and Jesus showed it to me. He told me one time, look up in the sky and take a picture of what you see there, and then blow it up. It was, it was cats, it was dogs, it was goldfishes, it was every kind of animal you could think of was in that picture in the clouds. They were watching me drive in, in California to go and speak. <laughs> oh, yes, honey. Be nice to your pets, people. They will be living with you. And going into your mansion, they have their own little door entrance to take to go in there, and their name is on that door. And they talk. They talked in the Garden of Eden. Why did the snake talk? It wasn't the only one that talked. They had the ability to talk. But when man fell, God removed it so they wouldn't bring a curse on themselves by saying something against God. Therefore, they are innocent. So therefore, and I, I can take you back to Genesis where um, Noah was on the, going on the ark. And God told Noah, take every animal on the ark that has a spirit of life in it. Do you remember Adam? The father breathed Adam's spirit of life into him, and he became a living. So your animals have souls. Your pets have souls. And so when they die, their spirit goes to heaven. Your own angel takes them to heaven. They will be waiting at the gate when you come home. Amen. If you've had 50, you're going to have a big piece of property. <laughs> I was caught up one time and saw my father. He's got a big ranch. I didn't talk to him, but behind him I saw every pet we ever had. There was a longest line of 15 kids. There was a lot of pets up there. Whether it was the little mice that lived in the, in the, into, the, into the wall in New York where we lived. We had little mice that we would teach little tricks to and things. You weren't allowed to have pets, but they were residents. They were not ours. I mean. We didn't go by them. They already were there before we arrived. We teach them to jump off the curtain rod right under the shoulder of whoever was visiting. They were in heaven, riding on the back of my dad's pet pig, Sally, who became 1,100 pounds before she passed away. My dad preached the gospel to her every day. Every kind of thing, alligators, iguanas, turkeys, birds, I mean, all kinds of birds, every kind of dog, every kind of fish, everything was there. 
So yes, if you've had an animal you love and have, have buried them, you'll have them in heaven. Amen? But of course, we know your family members are the most important. Never stop praying for their salvation. And once you start praying for the salvation, don't talk about people to people how bad they are. Don't cancel your prayers. That's from the Father. Don't cancel them. If you're believing they're going to be born again, don't tell every sin to somebody that they're doing. That shows you don't believe they're going to get born again. Amen? Amen. Say, yes, Father. I will talk good about them. I'll stand in the gap for them, but I will not blast them. There, you, you told him that. You made him a promise. Amen. Your words, like Joan said, are so important. You will become what you say. You have not because you ask not. That's another way it's important. You ask God for things. If you're not asking him for it, whether it's help or blessings or growing more in him, you need to ask, right? And then say, I receive it. So, Father, I thank you for this time to be with them. I thank you, God, that if there's anything else you want me to share, please let me know right now. He wants me to share about America. They have had so many millions of the hosts posted all over this country. Because it stands for God, it stands for heaven, it stands for righteousness. And there's more believers than there are sinners, in case you didn't know that. There are more believers than sinners, amen. And he is positioning certain people to have high-level places. I don't know if that's any of you here, but he is doing that. He's positioning people to actually take over part of the government. To raise people who were in the government that were bad, that were wicked, that were evil. Uh, a lot of those things are going to happen, and no one's going to escape seeing them happen. God's setting up this world for the glory to invade it. Amen. The glory is something that so consumes you, and I know about those clouds. I've seen those glory clouds. Heaven is covered with them. Sometimes they change colors. But around the throne of God, is the glory is there all the time. You step into that glory, and the Father will hold you in his arms and welcome you home. They already have plans for you when you get home. The gift that you walk in, that is the, the passion that you love, that you do well, they've already prepared all of your property for you to use that gift on that property. If you were doing rodeos, guess what you do in heaven? Yes, but the horses are talking to you when they're trying to buck you off. <laughs> it's a whole different life. And you think, yeah, I'm really good at this. Well, forget about that. They will talk to you. Can you imagine them saying, hey, I'm getting you. You're going to go in three seconds. You're just going to go. Get ready to land over there on that pot right there. And you're in so much shock, you don't know what to say to them, right? <laughs> the fish in the sea will talk to you. You'll be able to breathe underwater in heaven. It's just part of what you get when you go there. But being with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the greatest things you'll get to do. They will visit you to you at your mansion. They will call you to be with them, to go someplace with them. Uh, everybody feels so welcome. There's no rejection in heaven. You're not up there crying about all the mistakes that you made. You are falling in love with Jesus Christ. But this world you're living in right now is going to change. In the days of glory and wonder and splendor and the fire of the living God touching things, whole cities will change. So your life will not remain the way it has been. Say, my life will not be negative anymore. I am filled with the life of God. I choose his plans his way, and his will. In Jesus' name, I'm going after it. Amen. Amen. Woohoo! <laughs> Amen. One day, America, the beautiful, will not be thought of as a place to have, you know, the greatest living you've ever had. 
it will be known as the place to find God. And yes, Joan's ministry is about to explode. The property she will own will go beyond anything she thought it would be. It will be greater than she expected it to be. The money will be given to her to do anything that she wants to do with it. And so I thank you for blessing her also. Although she, she didn't really speak here, she shared a lot. She has poured her whole life out for this place. It costs a lot to do things like this just to have a meeting. There's so many dynamics to setting it up, making it run, besides the fact that you have to welcome the people who are going to be speaking for you, make sure they're taken care of. It's a lot. You give yourself to God to do it. And I know she does it, and she's my friend. So even if you've been hit by the enemy, let it go. And just embrace what God has for you. Because these days of glory and splendor, you will walk in until God is done with you. Amen. Just say, I'm willing to stay, God. As long as you need me here, I will stay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I do know, I think I have some photographs left. If whoever, who didn't get a photograph of me and my husband, anybody? If you didn't get it, come by that table in the back, and there's, there's some uh, photographs there for you to take. There's also a flyer about a cruise we'll be speaking on in July, this coming July, that you can sign up for and put a deposit down and make payments for each month. Uh, it'll be a wonderful thing. It's God's sea base, okay? To share the word on the land, the sea, and the air. He wants to cover this earth with his word, with the miraculous, with his presence, with his power, with his glory. And so thank you for coming. If you want to take a quick picture, we might have some time to do that, but I'm pretty tired from speaking. This is probably the longest time I've spoken, probably in several months, but it's been worth everything to come here. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love you very much. Uh, the name of my corporation is One Quest International. We reveal heaven to earth. We're going to have all kinds of home decor products come out next year. We'll have fashion lines come out sometime next year. The Garden Zone people are going to get all the gifts we've been holding for them for months. <laughs> And so thank you for being a part of what we're doing. We love you. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Expect suddenlies and blessings and God's hand moving for you. The glory, the power, and the fire of God. Say, I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Oh, the cruise that's going to be in July, it depends on the rooms. They have inside rooms where you don't get a window or a, a balcony or something. So you can call um, Heavenly Cruises and ask Pastor Sharon about the prices. I think it goes from like around 1,200 to 1,100 person. Some of the rooms, if you have big balconies and it's a bigger room, it could go up to like 2,200 or 3,000. But there's all different levels of prices, and there's like 17 um, decks on this, on this ship. Harmony of the Seas is one of the newest ones that there is, and it's going to the, uh, the Caribbean. So you will enjoy yourself, but we'll have meetings almost every day. A couple of days we don't, so that you can get off the ship if you want to and see some of the places. But I would just say, it's worth it. Amen. But like now, you can put a deposit down and make payments every month starting this month. And then by the time July comes, you'll already be paid. And let me say this. God wants you to go. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be consumed with him at all times. It's fun, it's amazing, it's powerful. The miraculous happens. We have a throne room party on the last day. Uh, everyone who's there that's anointed prays for everybody. They have intercessory meetings in the mornings on the ship. And this is like this massive ship. And so people will be all over in there. We pray for everybody no matter where you are. So I would call Pastor Sharon, okay? And what is Pastor his... Pastor Sharon is amazing. She's amazing. And she'll, she can try to help you make it happen. Uh, you can share a room with someone else. Uh, they do set that up. 
if there's like two girls that want to go, like two, two teenagers or older or whatever, she'll make sure that you get set with somebody if they want to be in the room with you to help the expenses of that. So there's all many ways, but the prices vary so much, like by thousands of dollars. So if you even get an inside room, it is a good side room, good size room. You're going to love being in that room. There's stuff all over the ship to do, not and just eat. on land. And there's places to eat everywhere, everywhere. and it costs nothing. And it costs nothing, okay? Your room has been paid for when you pay this fee. It pays for the room. It pays for all the food you eat on the ship. They serve food up till midnight. So you can eat many places. There's all kinds of things to see, beautiful dramas and other things that are put on the ship. And so, and you get to come have a meeting with us all the time. I think probably four days out of the seven or five days out of the seven, you'll be meeting in the conference room. And they have given us the whole conference room on the ship. Amen? And, the are going and I, yeah, the bullocks are going to be on the ship the whole time. We'll be sharing meetings. Robin and Lady Robin Bullock, uh, the prophets who were here the other night, and I, we will be doing the meetings, Okay. And they also do worship, a powerful, amazing worship. So you get to have both of us in that, on that during that cruise. And so it'll be a glorious time with heaven. Amen. 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 Amen.